Hey guys, we're going to do our first read of the story Vaqueros, America's First Cowboys. So to start off, I would make sure you have this handout ready. It's the summary writing. This is gonna focus on our reading comprehension strategy, which is summarizing. You can access the same worksheet on Google Classroom and do it in Google Slides or the paper copy. Let's start with our objective. Read it with me. Objective. I will read the informational text, Vaqueros, America's First Cowboys, using the summarizing comprehension strategy to monitor my understanding. Vaqueros, America's First Cowboys by George Ancona. Imagine, 500 years ago, there were no cows or horses in North and South America. Thousands of years earlier, there had been horses, but they disappeared. Since there were no cows, there were no cowboys. Of course, today there are cowboys. It is all because of Christopher Columbus. The Journeys After his voyage to the Americas in 1492, Christopher Columbus returned to Spain. He told the Spanish king and queen of the riches to be found in the paradise he discovered. He described the native people who lived there. The royal couple agreed to more voyages. They needed gold to help pay for their expanding empire. The following year, Columbus returned to the West Indies. He brought 17 ships loaded with over a thousand settlers, horses, and cattle. The ships dropped anchor at an island they named Hispaniola. Today, the island is shared by Haiti and the Dominican Republic. For the next 25 years, Spanish ships sailed in and out of Hispaniola. The Spaniards explored and conquered the nearby islands. The native islanders were enslaved. Thousands died of smallpox, a terrible disease for which they had no resistance. As the islanders disappeared, they were replaced by the settlers and their animals. Christopher Columbus landing on the island of Hispaniola, 1493. Okay, now I'm going to model the summarizing strategy. The first three paragraphs contain a lot of information. I need to pause to summarize what I've learned. So after 1492, Spain sent many ships to the island now shared by Haiti and the Dominican Republic. The ships were filled with settlers, horses, and cattle. Settlers enslaved the native islanders, many of whom died from smallpox. In 1503, Hernán Cortés, a Spanish adventurer, arrived in the West Indies. He spent several years helping to conquer Cuba. Then, in 1518, Cortés set out with a fleet of six ships to explore the nearby coast to the west. On board were 500 men and 16 horses strong enough to carry a man in full armor. The ships dropped anchor near where the port of Veracruz, Mexico, is today. The Teutonic people who live there welcomed Cortez. They offered to help him conquer the hostile Aztec empire that had long dominated them. Cortez did so in two years. He claimed all the lands in the name of the Spanish king. He called the land New Spain. It wasn't long before the Spanish conquerors brought more livestock to the colonies. The animals were allowed to graze on the open grasslands. Many took off into the wilderness, forming large herds of wild horses 
and cattle. Okay, now let's think about it. How were the impacts of Columbus and Cortez on the Americas similar? The expanding colony. The Spanish king rewarded Cortez and his soldiers with gifts of land. Throughout New Spain, they built ranches called haciendas and prospered. Accompanying the soldiers and settlers were Catholic missionaries. They had come to convert the native people. They moved north, building missions and churches along the California coast, extending the lands of New Spain. In 1540, Francisco Vasquez de Coronado organized an expedition into the northern territories. Coronado was searching for the legendary golden cities of Cibola. Along with the men and supplies, he brought 500 longhorn cattle to supply meat and hides. Okay, let's take a moment to pause and practice the summarizing strategy. Summarize the methods the Spanish used to colonize territories in North America. Example summary. Soldiers and others settled there and established ranches. Priests built churches and missions, claiming land for Spain and the church. The expedition never found the city of gold. However, it did introduce the first longhorns to what is now the American Southwest. From those first 500 longhorns, 10 million had spread across the Texas Plains by the 1800s. The soldiers and priests of New Spain were already acquainted with raising cattle in Spain. Many were skilled horsemen. Even so, they needed help in rounding up the livestock on their sprawling lands. At that time, it was against the law for any native person to ride a horse. But the ranchers and priests needed help. They taught the native converts to ride and use the lazo or lasso, a looped rope. These men who worked with horses and cattle were called vaqueros. In Spanish, the word means cow men. With the vaqueros, a new culture took root in the West. It lives on today. Okay, let's pause and think. What is the importance of the details about the long horn cattle in this paragraph? Well, the number of longhorn cattle grew from 500 to 10 million. This information shows how longhorn cattle became a feature of the West. It also shows that they were well suited to the climate and vegetation of this part of North America. A way of life. The vaqueros job was to keep tabs on cattle in the wild and round them up. It took many vaqueros to surround a herd so that it could be moved to the hacienda. These roundups are called rodeos in Spanish. Rodeo comes from a verb that means to go around. The vaqueros were also needed to capture the wild horses that flourished on the prairies and valleys of the large haciendas. The vaqueros called the horses mesteños, a word that would become mustangs. Vaqueros spent most of their lives in the saddle, riding hard in all kinds of weather. At night, they sat around the fire where they cooked their meals. They told stories and sang songs about their lives. Then they rolled up into their ponchos to sleep. From California to Texas, 
native vaqueros were acknowledged to be the best horsemen in the world. What do the details in that last paragraph suggest about the traits of a successful vaquero? We could say that it suggests that a successful vaquero had to love the outdoors, had to accept uncomfortable living conditions, and had to be at home in the saddle. Doing the job. A vaquero had to cope with a rough landscape and harsh weather. He needed the right tools to do his job. Vaqueros wore wide-brimmed hats called sombreros. Sombra means shade in Spanish. The sombrero protected vaqueros from the burning sun. A vaquero also wore chapareras or chaps. These were leather leggings worn over trousers. They protected the vaquero from cactus, thickets of wild brush, and rope burns. The horses belonged to the owner of the hacienda. The vaquero, however, owned the saddle that he put on the horse. The saddle had to be comfortable for both horse and rider. The vaquero's feet slid into two wooden stirrups that hung from the saddle. A vaquero's most trusted tool was his lasso, also known as the lariat. Often, a vaquero would have to gallop after a runaway, runaway steer. He would toss the loop of the lariat around the steer's horns, neck, or foot. Then he would wrap the rope around his saddle horn and rein in his horse. This would hold the steer or bring it to the ground. Once the herds were together, they calmed down and began to graze. Mountain vaqueros would separate the calves from their mothers to brand them with the hacienda's mark. How does the origin of the word sombrero explain its meaning? The text said, sombrero comes from sombra, which means shade. A sombrero provides shade for the one wearing it. So our summary handout asks us to start with the vaquero legend section. This is the section I'm about to read. We're going to begin with Mexico's independence from Spain and end with the implications of the end of the Civil War on vaqueros and other cowboys. So be listening for details that we can summarize here. The Vaquero Legend. In 1821, Mexico won its war of independence from Spain. All of New Spain became the independent nation of Mexico. The northern lands of Mexico, however, were difficult to govern. Many American immigrants crossed into the territory that would one day become Texas. Soon, there was a large population of Americans in Texas. In fact, they outnumbered the Mexican residents who lived there for generations. With the Americans came changes in the culture of the vaquero. Even the word changed. When Americ Americans tried to say vaqueros, it came out bucketa. Later, the word became buckaroo. It was only after 1860 that the men who worked with the cattle were called cowboys. Now we can summarize that first paragraph in the first box next to the transition word first. Mexico became independent from Spain in 1821. Therefore, all of New Spain became Mexico. Soon, more and more immigrants moved into what is now Texas, and the Americans outnumbered the Mexican residents who had lived there for hundreds of years. In 1836, Texas declared itself independent from Mexico. Nine years later, it joined the United States. Then, in 1847, Mexico lost a war with the U.S. 
As a result, it lost its northern lands. They would become the states of California, Nevada, Utah, and parts of Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Wyoming. Let's now summarize that paragraph in the box next to the transition word next. In 1836, Texas became independent from Mexico and then joined the United States in 1845. In 1847, Mexico lost a war with the United States and all the northern states became part of the United States. After the end of the Civil War, the vaqueros were joined by freed slaves and young men from the East. These newcomers wanted a new life in the wide open spaces. They had to learn what the vaqueros had been doing for centuries. Now, on your own, try summarizing that last paragraph here in this box next to the transition word, then. The large ranches needed many men to manage the huge herds of cattle on the vast prairies. Cattles would take weeks to travel from ranches to railroads. From there, the cattle traveled to the markets in eastern and western cities. The invention of barbed wire made it possible to build fences to keep cattle in pastures. The vaquero was not needed to ride the wide open spaces. Long cattle drives became unnecessary. The decline of the vaquero began. Now, try summarizing on your own again that last paragraph in the box here next to the transition after that. Make sure your summaries are in your own words. Yet the vaqueros traditions did not fade from the American imagination. At the turn of the century, the cowboy became the hero of the West. Books, magazine stories, and the early movies featured the brave exploits of the American cowboy. Now practice one last time summarizing that last paragraph. Put it in your own words in this box located next to the transition words in the end. Yeah. Celebrating traditions. Today, the arts and skills of the vaquero can be seen in two countries. They appear in the chadiadas of Mexico and the rodeos of the United States. Both vaqueros and cowboys pride themselves in their skills. They keep alive the traditions and cultures of their past. On September 14th, Mexicans celebrate El Dia del Charro. It is a holiday of parades, church services, music, and chadiadas. The chadiada is a rodeo where vaqueros can exhibit their skills. They perform with charros and charras, gentlemen and women riders. The men dress in their elegant silver buttoned outfits. Thanks and for listening. Check your answers.